Press the blue lever to lower him to your deck. Here, Jay. I'm gonna just cut to the chase. This movie sucks. Bad animation, bad story, just bad everything. But there are two things that make this film stand out from the norm. First off, it's tone. For a kid's movie, there sure are a lot of adult references. The other thing that makes this film stand out from the norm is a certain somebody who was part of the production. And his name? Bond. James Bond. Yep, Sean Connery. Because who else is better to star in a kid's movie than this guy? And let me tell you, the people behind this film were proud of that fact. You could make a drinking game out of all of the meta Sean Connery references. All right, so let's talk about the origin of this movie. The people behind its creation are Sasha and Tessa Hartman. Wait, could it be? No way, no. The intellectual property, that is Sir Billy, belongs to Sasha and Tessa, and comes across as their creative love child. As far as I can tell, it was originally a book called Sir Billy the Vet, but I could not find said book anywhere on the internet. But that doesn't matter. It was time to make a movie, and cash in on Sean's dead career. For those who don't know, Sean was once James Bond, and was one of the most popular actors in Hollywood. Over the years though, he passed up on major roles that ranged from Lord of the Rings to The Matrix. But the roles that he did say yes to were typically bad, and did not do so well critically or financially. The guy eventually retired, but was offered the role of Sir Billy in the early 2000s. <laughs> Apparently, this was worthy of coming out of retirement for. I could only imagine that this was due to the movie being a massive ego stroke, and the likely chance that Sean was being paid quite handsomely. From what I can tell, the guy cares a lot about money. The people that make Shrek, you know, that picture, they must be kicking themselves that they haven't got your dulcet tones on their movie. And here's this lovely this film from Scotland getting made with your, with your voice. Uh, uh, uh. Oh yeah, I can only imagine that Disney and DreamWorks really regret passing this one up. The film itself had a long and difficult production that lasted many years and saw a high turnover with animators. The Hartmans also pushed the film as something that Scotland should be proud of, as an original animated movie that represents the country. Well, let's just say another movie came out around the same time of Sir Billy's release that wasn't made in Scotland, but was a much better representation of Scotland. A princess should not place her weapon on the table. But mom, it's just the metal. All right, so let's go over my five points. Dialogue. <laughs> Boy, is it weird. There are moments where Sean just goes off and threatens to beat somebody up. And uh, I'm gonna be honest, it seems pretty accurate of the way that Sean actually is. You did an interview in which you said, it's not the worst thing to slap a woman now and then. As I remember, you said you don't do it with a clenched fist, it's better to do it with an open hand. Mm. Yeah, remember that? Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't love that. I haven't changed my opinion. Editing. Some of the cuts are bizarre, but the thing that stands out to me the most is the audio. It sounds, uh, how do I describe this? Uh, Metallic-y? Like some kind of filters were put on the audio and it does not work. And it especially sounds bad on Sean. Right, I see. Gordon, well there you are. Well where have you been? Speaking of audio, voice acting. Not only is the audio bad quality wise, but also in its delivery. You can tell that Sean phoned this one in and did not care. He mumbles his words, he doesn't sound very enthusiastic, and his overall tone comes across as tired. My lunch sub sure reminds me of another adventure. Story. The pacing of the movie doesn't make any sense. For example, they build a sense of urgency with one of the characters being in danger of drowning, and said that the character needs immediate help. Following that, it takes the rest of the characters like 
10 minutes to actually do anything. It's infuriating. I shit you not, they hold a town committee before acting. That's like seeing someone's house on fire and spending the next half hour debating with others on what to do. Also, this movie is littered with Sean Connery references, and every time one is said, it just takes me out of the film. Wish you don't know. My name is William. Bill, you two are my friends. Pleased to meet you, and indeed welcome to Catalyst. You are crazy ugly! And finally, animation. The character models are very unappealing and look like they belong in Back to the Barnyard. But in that show's defense, at least it was clever and the animation somewhat works with the feel of the cartoon. Here, it has none of the charm and is just off-putting. And don't even get me started on the female designs. They all have exaggerated features, especially with their curves and chest. Massive breasts to go with their ugly faces. Hello? <laughs> have you got any of those Mrs. Plumper's pies with blueberries? <laughs> Plumper's arrived this afternoon. Oh, fantastic! Okay, so we start off with this awful logo. I mean, just look at the design. What's the thought process here? Just uh, shove his face into the bee, whatever. The guys who made this movie really wanted to ride the coattails of Sean Connery and his previous role as James Bond. And how did they do this? Well, by making their own version of a James Bond intro. You know what that means? Silhouettes of sexy girls. <laughs> this does not work, especially for a kid's movie. It feels so sexually charged with all of the voluptuous ladies shaking their bodies across the screen. And mind you, one of these girls, the one in the glasses, is Sir Billy's daughter. I guess he's, uh, I guess he's cool with that. Uh, go up there, sweetie, and shake your crown for daddy. Oh, and what movie would be complete without Sean Connery doing skateboard tricks? You know, cause, uh... <laughs> Because, uh, why the hell not? Okay, so the movie actually starts, and we're soaring across the Scottish Highlands. We then hear Sean Connery talk, and my god, does he sound bad. Like, I don't know how to explain it. His voice is, like, robotic-y and, and tired. What a rare film. <laughs> More like a shitty film. So Sean shuts up, and we zoom in on, and I quote, an illegal animals deportation camp. There, we have some Scottish cops loading up a shipment of talking beavers. Hey, lads. I'll be back in Norway before dawn breaks tomorrow. Stupid idea, man. <laughs> what? So we learn that beavers have been made illegal in Scotland, and these guys are trying to get rid of them. Just because the rest of those mad Europeans decided to reintroduce the funny little creatures, it doesn't mean we have to have them roving about the highlands now, does it? Oh, come on now, McTavish, they're not all bad. I've eaten the meat from their tail and their paws, and I must tell you, yes, mighty tasty. <laughs> Okay, so this is a problem that I have with movies that feature animals that are basically humanoid. Like, where's the line? Do humans eat them, or are they considered equals? Because as far as I'm concerned, this guy's a cannibal. So they start to drive, but the truck tips over, letting loose some of the beavers. And <laughs> I gotta say, it was a pretty nasty crash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they probably are. Okay, so there's this weird bit of animation where the cops open the door of the truck and the truck driver is like out of focus, but the cops aren't? Like, what the hell's that about? So one of the beavers hides from the cop and is found by this ugly ass bunny instead. We then lead into the next scene, where we've been told that it's been five years later, and that the rest of the beavers in Scotland were sent to Norway. We then meet this awful character. A duck who flies a plane and sounds like she's southern, but not really. Anyway, my name is Victoria, and I will be your captain, your stewardess, first officer, and, 
Oh yeah, black engineer. And if you couldn't tell, we're in a Scottish town. Honestly though, they don't give us much evidence to figure that out. Hello? Have you got any of those Mrs. Plumford's pies with blueberries? Again, is this a kid's movie? Cause that jiggling makes me think otherwise. I should have been a detective inspector by now. Here I am, still chasing the mysterious smelly beaver. <laughs> So the cop is still looking for the beaver, as it remains at large. But who cares? Because we finally get to meet Sean Connery, a local hero who goes by the name of Billy, and works as an animal veterinarian. It's been a long time since I've been in a jacuzzi. Okay, so I want to take a quick moment to highlight this scene. Behold the Scottish flag. Beautiful. Proud, center stage. And then you have the British flag, ripped, worn, thrown into the background. Makes you kind of wonder if the folks who made this movie harbor any kind of resentment for the British. We then meet Billy's goat friend Gordon, an anthro character who, for some reason, wears a jumpsuit that looks like Uma Thurman's from Kill Bill. <laughs> kind of ironic, with his name being Billy, but uh, I doubt that was intentional. Well, he better not be out with that Dalmatian domino again. Eh? Yeah? a frisky thing, that one. It, what? Is this goat fucking dogs? Um, you're the man, Billy. <sighs> Just, uh, just gotta keep shoving those references in, don't you guys? Oh, yeah, gross. There's no one quite like you in this hood. Sorry, uh, village. What the fuck is this guy's character? Hey, hey. It's wet here. Gordon, I could have hurt myself. Wait, he pissed himself? How? He's wearing a jumpsuit! Again, what the hell is this guy? Is he a pet? A friend? A piece of shit? So Billy goes off to school to pick up his grandson Jake. Now then, my lucky lad, give Papa a juicy kiss. So Billy and his son arrive into town, and we meet the love interest of the movie. Miss Donna, my name is William. Billy to my friends. Pleased to meet you, and indeed welcome to Catalyst. I never thought I would see the day. The old guy is actually flirting. All right, so I'm confused. Is Billy actually James Bond in retirement? Because the movie sure makes it seem that way. Also, most of the kids watching this film won't get these references. Maybe their parents might, but that's about it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with making references, but the movie goes too far at times. Like, we get it. Sean Connery played James Bond. Stop bringing it up. Also, what the hell is going on here? Is this some topless lady smacking her chest? The kid noticed, and so did I. So we cut back to the beaver, hanging out with some bunnies as they head to some kind of sporting event. So the sporting event that they're at is log sledding? Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if this was an actual thing in Scotland. I mean, they do log throwing, so it's not too impossible. So the bunny gets jealous of the beaver and tries to outdo her, but fails horribly. <laughs> He's then hanging on to a cliff for dear life. I love the reaction of the beaver when she runs up. She's like, what's going on? Oh my God! So the bunnies fall and are now floating downstream. The beaver jumps into action and tries to save them, but she does a horrible job. She basically swims right past her mother. Like, look, she's like, oh, don't worry, mom. You're okay. Just hang on the edge of that water. Don't let your lifeless body drown. I guess that you could say that they're waterlogged. Eh? I guess you could say that they're waterlogged. We then cut back to Billy who, and I shit you not, hits a bunny with his car. And then Billy gets angry at the bunny. Bunny, what the devil do you think you're doing? 
You nearly caused an accident. You know that? But the bunny explains to Billy the situation, and honestly, it's the most infuriating thing ever. She goes on and on and on about the problem. A problem that, in my eyes, is quite time sensitive. And then Billy takes his time to address it. Like, guys, they're probably dead by now. We need to move fast, people. Bessie Boo's life is hanging on a thread. Yeah, you do. Too bad for the bunny, you're doing the complete opposite. That's all very well, Sir William, but uh, have you forgotten that my McToff Industries dam opens today? The turbines have been running since dawn. Can't you switch them off, man? What if we don't catch them before they reach the dam? Why, come on now, McToff. I'm sure we can discuss this, man. Can I give him one? We then get this scene where Billy awkwardly threatens the police officer, which would be illegal, I would imagine. I suggest if your business is not for the good of Caterness, that you leave right now, son. Are you understanding me? <laughs> yes, run away, son. A good move on your part. You coward. I wouldn't fancy my chances if I were you. But nope. Billy just goes on and on with the cop, and it actually sounds like a real confrontation with how weird the dialogue is. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they wired Sean Connery and recorded him yelling at an actual police officer. We cut back to Billy and his friends at the river as they find the beaver's mom. I need to check her out first. Oh, Billy, it doesn't look good, does it? We then get a lesson about paralysis and how a broken spine might mean permanent damage, which, you know, is a good thing to learn, but it kind of stops the flow of the movie. Billy's all like, let me tell you all for the next few minutes about nerve damage and how to tell if someone's a paraplegic. By the way, it's been about 12 minutes in actual movie time since they found out about the emergency and they still haven't gotten down to the river. Like I said before, is this a kid's movie? Cause that upskirt shot really makes you wonder. Finally, I knew it. Oh, if you don't run before I get you, wee one, your life is over. God damn, dude, calm down. That's Bessie down there. Quick, Admiral, you're the Navy man. Jumping after her before we miss her. Okay, so the people who made this movie really had a thing for girls with big tits. I mean, seriously, every single woman in this film has a massive rack. But when you look at their faces, holy shit, are they bad. From the inbuilt powerhouses to the generators, we should have a combined generating capacity of almost 3,000 megawatts. Check out this scene. Can you guess which of the characters is the generic nerd? Come on, chop chop. Let's get back to the observation deck and get this show going right. Okay, so a couple of things. First off, that ass. Second, why the puns? They really have no connection with the characters or the movie at all. They're just random puns. One for pizza and one for cleaning supplies. We then see Billy get pissed off and demand that the damned turbines be shut down. Listen to me. I've had one hell of a morning. And I'm not taking any more nonsense, understand? Uh, I don't know how you do it, but I want that turbine turned off. Just in case we can't get Bessie and Dave. But, oh no, the cop has arrived and told Billy to not interfere. But Billy and his goat jump into action. They're able to rescue the bunny, but they couldn't get to the beaver. Also, the duck decides to run her plane into the helicopter, cause why the hell not? Steals my airspace. Okay, so I love this next part. So the beaver is dragged into the metal grate and Billy screams out, no, Bessie. But then the audio layers over to the beaver screaming. So when you watch it in its entirety, it sounds like Billy's voice cracks. No, Bessie. Bessie. <laughs> so the goat straps a bungee cord on and jumps down to save the beaver, which is goddamn impressive. I mean, the timing to pull this off is just insane. But then Gordon falls into the water and starts to float downstream. Why is the team moving? Oh, what a drama, huh? Poor Gordy. Talk 
talking about cramping one's style. <laughs> wow, what a bitch. So they're able to get Gordon and they lift him out of the water. Just press the blue lever to lower him to your deck. But then, out of nowhere, a goddamn Russian nuclear powered submarine emerges. And before a Hunt for Red October reference, I hope Vicky heard that emergency whistle. Oh my, that sub sure reminds me of another adventure. <laughs> <laughs> Called it. I do believe that Zulu class is this Russian submarine. Now, honey, Okay, so this duck just said the word ass in a kid's movie and also acknowledged that the submarine is Soviet, considering that it's been nearly 30 years since the end of the Soviet Union. You just been underwater the entire time, comrade? Didn't get the memo? Again, Indiana Jones. I should be called Jemima Bond. Okay, so she just made a James Bond joke. So is he just fictional or not? God, I hate these references. I've got an idea. Drop the rope, Vicky. Holy shit, that's impressive. You'd think that grabbing on would break his arms, or at the very least, rip the skin off his hands. Wait. Why does this goat have hands? I've got you. So Gordon is knocked out, and Billy wonders if he's dead. We then get this random ass memory lane montage of the two, and it doesn't make any sense. Why is Gordon strip teasing in a kid's movie? Why are they recreating a scene from Rocky? And check it out. It's the book Sean Connery read after signing up to make this movie. So the duck has some kind of healing water and throws it at Billy. So Gordon survives because he drank booze. The cop then steals the beaver and takes off, but Billy goes after them. How does he do this? <laughs> you should know by now. He takes his James Bond car, of course. Deja vu. Then the most outrageous part of this movie happens. Billy takes to his skateboard and goes after the cop. We are riders on a mission, action, kids in play position, power. Billy then lands on the car and starts to fight the cop as they make their way into a military base, cause why the hell not? So the cop tries to get Billy arrested, to which Billy, once again, threatens to beat the police officer. Give me five minutes for this joker detective. And you can do what you want with me. But the joke's on the cop. He gets arrested, and that's that. By the way, this beaver has been crying throughout the entire movie. Well, like, I can't think of a single scene where she wasn't crying. What the actual fuck does that mean? We then get a music number to reference James Bond one more time. Gotta milk those lady character models for all they're worth. You know, the ones with the ugly faces and huge tits. Oh my god. Are they doing all the single ladies? First Johnny's dad, and now this. And to finish things off, we got Billy hitting on a lady who is practically the same age as his daughter. His daughter even comments on this, and in a very weird way. Oh, I'm so glad he's found a wee bit of happiness now. <laughs> it's been long overdue. Even if she is a brazen lassie with a funny accent and I dare say an enviable chest. 
Oh, man, my dad's dating a girl younger than me, and I'm very envious of her massive knockers. Fuck this movie, it's bad. Why did you decide to make this one? Well, because it was so original. Again, Indiana Jones! I should be called Jemima Bond. Really an exceptional cast. <laughs> and this one is good for three-year-olds to any age. For the kids, I believe it's... Um, First class. So yeah, this movie sucked. I mean, it wasn't the worst thing I've ever seen, and there are a handful of redeeming qualities, but not nearly enough to make this film worth watching. Unless you want to laugh at how bad it is. This was a pitiful movie that suffered from a difficult production, and it's very evident in the final product. The Hartmans were just trying to cash in on Sean Connery's dead career, and pulled his corpse out of the grave to make it so. They practically referenced every famous movie the guy was in, and very little of it actually had to do with the plot of the movie. It was just, uh, hey, here's a Sean Connery acting reference cause he's the star of our film. I mean, imagine if Pixar did the same thing in Toy Story and brought up movies Tom Hanks was in. You've got a friend in me. You've got a friend in me. References do not make a movie, and neither does shitty animation. And so ends the acting career for one of the most influential actors in movie history. <laughs> Good riddance. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, give it a like and sub for more future videos. Also, a shout out to all of my supporters on Patreon. If you want to support my content, go hit up the link in the description. All right, thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys next time.